Hello everyone and welcome to a review of Disney Pixar's Onward, a movie I'm betting a lot of you didn't see because it's not doing that well at the box office. Oh, we'll talk about that in a minute. I'll talk about what I thought of the movie. I go see every single Disney animated movie and Disney Pixar movie. Well, maybe I'll never go see another Toy Story sequel again, but that's another story. Um, uh, so I had to see Onward. I didn't think it looked bad. A lot of people disagreed. Um, I kind of had, I, I wasn't hyped about it. I kind of had a like, lack of hype, so I can understand why people aren't as interested in the film. There's nothing about the trailer that really sticks out other than just the gimmick of it. it's. It's going to be... Um, it's going to be a real life story set with trolls and fantasy creatures and elves and so forth. And it's another Pixar gimmick and we've seen Pixar gimmicks before and it's not really that great anymore and I'll talk about that in a minute. The movie itself is good. It's pretty good. It's just a solid good movie. Um, what I really liked about it, this movie stars two um, superhero movie stars. Tom Holland plays the main character and Chris Pratt plays his brother. <coughs> And the movie is about them going on a journey um, to to talk to their dad. They get what the whole gimmick of the movie is that they find a spell left to them from their dad that will let them talk to him for one day. Their dad passed away before um, the main character Ian, played by Tom Holland, uh, before he could really meet him. And so they get to see him for one day, but um, Ian messes up the spell or he's not able to complete it, and so only half of their dad comes back. So they have to find another crystal to finish the spell to bring their dad back so they can finally talk to him and they only have 24 hours before they can really see him now again positive things chris chris pratt tom holland tom holland is an excellent actor he's really good at playing the insecure teenager um i really liked how the character models were made to were made to model their actors and they really modeled their emotions and the way that they act i saw that in various scenes with the character of ian how it would mold his face to react in the way tom holland reacts in scenes i really recognized that i thought that was really cool felt like i was watching solidly real characters great great animation on that on that on that level i i did like the story i did like his character of ian a lot he was a uh, just insecure person trying to find his place not feeling assertive like he can do anything he causes a lot of his own problems because he just can't push himself to do anything he's afraid of everything and that's a great contrast in chemistry with his brother who as the movie says is afraid of nothing and so they i thought that the movie it just had it had good moments it had good funny moments uh with the characters it had a good structure good nice solid structure in terms of um getting the characters through different situations and problems where um uh, Ian's gonna have to learn how to merge as they're driving away in a car and even though he was afraid of merging so now he has to do that and it had great great stuff to see with the magic element of the movie um, with uh, the different spells that would have to be cast and what they would do and I liked the overall story and how it, it ended up the story of um, of trying trying to talk to his dad one last time and uh, finding it within him to conjure up the magic and that whole connection of trying to of it is just a mirror of how people uh, try to find it within themselves, things that they can do in real life. And so I thought it was a solidly entertaining movie. Um, I have two big criticisms with it, though. The first criticism is that um, Pixar has kind of a formula, and you've seen it a million times by now. You know when there's going to be an emotional moment and what kind of emotion they're going to try to bring from you at the ex a certain moment and so that's how I found it kind of predictable I'm like oh now there's going to be tension between the two characters or oh now there's going to be a moment of doubt now there's going to be a moment of triumph now there's going to be a moment of bittersweet sadness it's all very predictable I got to bring spoilers here now to explain at the end of the movie um they do get to see their dad for just five seconds but ian isn't able to only one of them can uh, i won't talk about why so he lets his brother see him because he thought that would be better because uh ian realizes that his brother was his real dad this whole time and ian, and while his brother barley never really got to see his dad so he thinks that it's best if he if only one of them can see their dad then it should be him it's a very touching moment but i was in one of the things i liked about the movie but it was a very 
predictable one because I'm like, well, I know that the, it's it's weird with Disney. They think, um, oh, people know that people don't want to have a predictable movie. Where we need to subvert ex, we need to subvert expectations in some way. We can't let two boys get to meet their father at the end. We have to do something that subverts expectations, or only one of them gets to meet, and it's the one that seemingly wanted it, uh, didn't want it as much, and didn't need. It didn't de define his life by it because um, uh, Ian feels like he needs to see his dad or he won't know what to do with himself. And and, um, and that's why the movie's called Onward because he doesn't feel like he can move forward with his life unless he sees his dad again. So it's a subvert expectation thing, but it's something where they've tried so hard not to be predictable. They've made themselves predictable again because every Disney movie I've seen for years now has done this. Um, it's the thing with uh, oh the the twist villain thing. You don't you think you know the villain, but you don't. Here's a twist villain. You think you know this movie's gonna end, but no, it's not gonna give you what you want. It's only semi gonna give you what you want. I expect it all with Disney movies now. I expect what they're going to do, and in their attempt to subvert expectations, they. I've just to turn it back to square one where I, I get you I get your formula Disney I know what you're gonna do now it's like you have it if it's like you have a map out and you have you you have a certain idea that maybe a writer presents you and you go okay this is gonna happen this is gonna happen this is gonna happen success well probably not success because this movie's not doing that well um, the other thing I had a problem with is this movie is that um, for the beginning it really tries to be a coming um, we really set up this arc with Ian about how he, uh, is, again, he's really insecure. He's trying to find himself, and that's really the point in the first half of the movie, and it seems like Barley, his brother, is just a background character, or just a supporting character to be goofy and to push him around. And then by halfway through the movie, all of a sudden it switches gears, so it's all about these two brothers, and that's where it leads up to the resolution of the film. And it's like, well, you can't just switch gears. You should have built up both things at the beginning of the movie. You can't do that. Um, I thought that this movie was good in that it really felt like a, a modern day movie. It felt like the characters were from uh, real life. It, it really didn't matter that they looked like elves. It really felt like they were real characters. It really felt like it's a modern setting. But with that said, it almost felt like it didn't need to be about elves or or anything like that or that gimmick. By the end of the movie, they felt like actual characters. And I know that they, they kind of needed the gimmick because they needed to bring magic in. And there is a little subplot about how the townspeople have forgotten their sense of adventure and magic. Or the, the world has forgotten that and they have to refine it. But other than that, this was a movie where I really felt it's it's not like Toy Story, where that's absolutely necessary. The movie revolves around the fact that they're toys. Or Monsters Incorporated, where it revol revolves around the fact that they're monsters. It's just a movie that needs a gimmick, and they found one. And so it, it's not as bad as Cars, where it absolutely didn't need that, but... Um, it just felt like, again, it felt like a formula. We've seen this. We've been there. This doesn't have anything to stand out. And so it's a fine movie. It's a it's a good movie. I would recommend watching it if you're just, if you want something to watch on Disney+, Plus, then you can look up this movie and watch it. It's, it's really entertaining. I really like the two main characters. I think that it hits all the beats that um, animated movies should hit with humor and heart, as they say. But it doesn't do anything to make itself stand out. And with the box office failure of this movie, I think the coronavirus, they're saying, that is a lot to do with it because no one overseas is getting is getting tickets to this movie. Yes, I think that's a big deal. I also think that when you try so hard to have a, a selling formula that works, and Disney is great at that, eventually people catch on. And eventually it isn't interesting anymore. And you see, oh, it's, it's not really that whimsical or interesting coming from Pixar to do this movie about trolls and how it's basically Flintstones with magic and unicorns where they're a modern family that lives in the time of Camelot. It, it's just not interesting. You see, oh, we've seen. It's a gimmick. It's another Pixar gimmick. It's not something that's standing out. You need the writing there, and the writing here is fine, but it's it's just competent. It's everything Pixar has done before. Nothing really surprised me. So um, it sounds weird because I've I've been very down on this movie throughout this review, but I I really enjoyed it. Again, I've enjoyed it, but I need I acknowledge all the problems that it has, and I acknowledge why I think a lot of people didn't go even beyond the coronavirus. So. Onward, uh, yeah, watch it on streaming, and I would recommend giving it just a try out, but Disney, you have to continue to allow yourself to be creative and allow yourself to think uh, from a business perspective. You can't squash your creativity just to make surefire business moves because those surefire business moves aren't going to last forever if you can't give anyone anything really interesting or new. So that's all I have for, um, 
Onward, I'm a little, I need a cough right now. But that's all I have for Onward. Um, so far, I can't say I see have seen a bad movie this year. This is another 7.5 movie. Um, thanks for watching. I'll have more movie reviews, comic reviews, and discussions in the future on this channel if you like and subscribe. So thanks, and I'll see you later.